Better not hit his house. Oh shit. First test flight, fail. <laughs> <laughs> So, came out here to test it in another spot, GoPro Karma Drone versus the Phantom 4. Just like the Mavic, they just pop right out just like that. Just like all the other drones, they have certain color for every prop, so like silver and black. That silver right there goes on the silver screw, and then the black one obviously goes on the black. So you just spin those on there real quick, lock them in, It's like that. And now I'm gonna use my GoPro with because I have a Karma Grip. And just like this, I can pop his his GoPro out and put mine in. This is my GoPro right here. You just go ahead and slide her in. Just like that. Lock it in and it's ready to rock. And here we go. What's up guys? Sorry if it sounds a little echoey in here. It's a new room that I've been starting to put together for like just an office and it's turning out pretty cool but there's still some echoey sounds in here that I need to try to get rid of with like acoustic panels and stuff like that and the stuff on the wall behind me. But you'll see more of that and you might see or hear a little bit better in the future videos. To go over the comparisons and stuff with the Karma drone and the DJI Phantom 4, it would have been better to compare the Karma with the Mavic since they're kind of comparable with how they fold up with the small controllers and stuff like that. But I just have the Phantom, the Phantom 4, so that's my main that I use all the time. That's the only one that I have. I mean, it's a pretty good comparison because that video quality does the same video quality as the Mavic, which is 4K 30 FPS. But pretty much with the GoPro and the settings with the GoPro and the settings in camera with or in flight with the DJI products, they're pretty much damn near the same. The only thing is picture quality. You'll notice that it seems the DJI is a little bit more sharper and has a little bit more brightness, like ISO settings is a little bit brighter and Everything that you just saw is all completely raw, non-edited, no color correction, nothing. You'll notice that with the GoPro Karma, obviously the GoPro has a warmer image. A lot of people like that fisheye look. And the only, the only bad thing is if you don't want that fisheye look and you want more of a narrow shot like most of the videos that are nowadays, you can't do that with 4K 30 FPS on the GoPro. You would have to change it to 1080p 60 FPS in order to do a narrow shot rather than the fisheye. So that's the downfall about not being able to do 4K with the Karma if you don't want that fish eye. 
uh, wide shot. Now to go over kind of the specs with the GoPro Karma, the Karma, the battery for flight time is about 20 minutes. So it's not as good as the DJI products, whereas the Mavic is 27 minutes and the Phantom 4 is 28 minutes. Now with the GoPro Karma, like as I was saying, the distance that it can fly is about uh, 1.8 miles, like I said, something like nine or 9,800 feet. So if you do the math, I think it comes out to be 1.8 miles. I'm not 100% sure on that. But with the Mavic Pro, it goes oh, a little bit over four miles for distance. And with the Phantom 4, it goes about three miles. So all in all, the Mavic is superior when it comes to distance, even though with FAA, you should have a line of sight on your drone at all times, and you shouldn't be flying it without being able to see where it's at. Now with the um, GoPro Karma as well, the maximum speed is about 35 miles per hour and then the wind resistance rating for that is 20 miles per hour. Compared to the Mavic and the Phantom, Phantom 4, they go about 40 miles an hour, 44. So pretty significant, I mean that's pretty fast, but a lot of the shots that you see that I do, I usually don't go really fast. Usually you want to fly fast in like sport mode and stuff like that if you're following like cars or whatever, whatever you're doing, I guess it just kind of depends. I noticed that the DJI products handle, ex handle extremely well in wind situations. You'll see that with the DJI products it adjusts, and I'm sure the GoPro Karma, I didn't really do any tests with how well it handles with wind, but the, the rating online is 20 miles per hour. Now controller, so the controller was the hugest thing for me. The controller is what you want to be comfortable with when flying because, I mean, that's your control. That's basically your control panel. With the DJI products, their um, joysticks are a little bit taller and it seems to be a little bit easier to handle and manage with flying and in certain situations. Now with the Karma, the GoPro Karma, the joysticks are flat and kind of small. So it was extremely difficult to get used to since I'm used to the DJI. I can't say it's bad, but in my personal opinion, I didn't really like how they handled compared to the Phantom 4. Uh, also with connectivity issues, we flew it at my parents' house, the Karma drone. I don't mean to bash it like crazy, but the connectivity issues were an extremely uh, frustrating thing to handle in some of the situations because it would, at the top you have a green bar and the farther you go or the connectivity between the controller and the drone, the green bar will slowly go down. and. It seemed in certain situations, I wasn't really far, but it would say it would lose connection quite a bit. That's why we decided to go to a different spot. Pretty much all the drone shots that you just saw later in the video, it would handle pretty, pretty good there. I didn't really have any issues with connectivity. The only thing that freaked me out was when I started flying it back underneath the bridge. When I put it in full tilt mode, like to start going really fast, I don't know if it was the weight of the camera that started drawing it down, so that may be kind of a drawback as well. I don't know if that it should have happened or maybe it was the way I was controlling it. As soon as I started going fast, it just started being weird and going down towards the ground like the camera was heavy for the, the drone. But compared to the Phantom products, handle really nicely. You can go as fast as you can. It won't lose altitude. It won't. Um, the height won't drop, the height won't increase, it stays pretty consistent and handles very well. The drone for the GoPro is really good because of the package deal that you get with it for a thousand dollars, maybe a little bit over a thousand dollars. You get the Karma Grip, which is a handheld stabilizer, which this thing is awesome. I use it all the time now, ever since I got it. The Karma Drone, you get the backpack and the Karma uh, Grip can be mounted to the backpack as well for like hiking and stuff like that. All of that together, it's a pretty good deal for a thousand bucks because you can easily transfer from the Karma Grip to the Karma Drone in a matter of seconds and be able to fly or use the handheld stabilizer pretty quickly. Now the Phantom 4 is about a thousand two hundred dollars, so twelve hundred bucks, and the Phantom 4 Pro I believe is about $1,600, $1,500? And then the Mavic is also $1,000. So between the Mavic and the GoPro, they're similar in prices. 
So I guess this kind of depends on on your preference. If you want to have the handheld stabilizer for walking around on trips and stuff like that, and then have the drone to do um, not very far distance shots, and it's still kind of close to you. But if you're a drone guy or you just you have the camera equipment and you want to add a drone to the family of your cameras, I would get the Mavic because it is it folds up just like the Karma drone, very compact, very easy to carry and handle, and just all in all, it's a really good drone with the distance and the speed and the way it handles with wind and proximity sensors and stuff like that. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. If you could slap a thumbs up on the video and share it, that'd be great. And don't forget to subscribe and you could watch the last video if you would like. Thanks guys.